Hi DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today I'm going to be going over how you can integrate your SmartThings hub with the Lynx L5210. Now we have a similar video, it's showing how to use the L7000 and today I'm actually going to be demonstrating the uh, pairing of the L5210 and the SmartThings hub using the L7000. Um, we don't actually have an L5210 in the office right now, so the L7000 is the exact same system as the L5210, except the L7000 has a 7-inch display and the L5210 has a slightly smaller display. So um, when I'm showing this video and you have an L5210 but you're confused as to why I'm doing it on the L7000, no worries, it's the exact same process, it's just a different size screen is all. So to start off, uh, let's go ahead and go over SmartThings Hub with the L5210 integration. In order for any of this to work, right, we're looking at, at basically pairing Z-Wave devices or sharing Z-Wave devices between both hubs. If that is the case, you need to make sure that your L5210 has the Z-Wave module actually installed into it. It's called the L5100 Z-Wave module. It's a, uh, it's a little green board that you actually plug in to the motherboard of the L5210 in order to make it Z-Wave compatible. Now, make sure when you're installing this Z-Wave module that the system is powered down. You do not want to install any communicators while the system is powered up as you may fry or short circuit the module or system. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get into what the actual integration does, right? So if you guys are using Z-Wave devices with the SmartThings hub and you guys just happen to buy a new L5210 or are moving into a place that has an L5210 and you want to combine these two. Uh, to start off, the SmartThings hub will never be able to control an actual UL certified Honeywell alarm system. That includes the L5210. So if you're looking at trying to use SmartThings to arm and disarm your Lynx L5210 system, that simply will not work. The only uh, integration between both hubs is just the sharing of the Z-Wave devices and only the compatible Z-Wave devices. So if you guys, uh, for instance, on my SmartThings hub, when I pull it up in a second, you guys are going to see I actually have some uh, some speakers, some Z-Wave speakers that are learned in to the actual hub. If you guys are trying to learn in Z-Wave speakers to your Lynx panel, they will not work. Only the compatible home automation devices uh, will work between both of the hubs. So for instance, I have a lock a plug-in module, a Z-Wave thermostat, and um, maybe I think like one more device. Uh, uh, the Z-Wave Siren learn into my SmartThings hub. Uh, those Z-Wave devices will get pushed over to the L5210 because they're compatible home automation. If you're wondering what kind of devices you, you can add, we're talking about door locks, lights, thermostats, light bulbs, Z-Wave modules, Z-Wave switches, Z-Wave garage door controllers, and Z-Wave blind controllers. Um, Pretty much anything that's home automation and Z-Wave should technically learn into the system, but Z-Wave speakers, those do not, all right? Um, so uh, now that I have my L7000, which we'll consider this our L5210 for today's video's sake, um, powered up and ready to go, the first thing we wanna go ahead and do is open up our SmartThings app, all right? Um, so let me go ahead and get me my tablet ready. I'm gonna be using an iPad, this will work if you're using a, uh, an iPhone, Android, tablet, um, or just a smartphone in general. So let me get everything ready for you guys. All right, so once you have your smart things, or um, once you have your smartphone or your tablet ready to go, you're gonna go ahead and make sure first you have to download, you have to download the smart things app. Right, if you have smart things you want to if you already have it I'm assuming you probably already have your login credentials so you're just gonna log into your account after you log in you should be taken to the dashboard which will look something like this um, and I'm gonna go to my home now you'll see here in my home the on the top left I have the all office and office and the speaker icons to the left hand side those are my Z, my z-wave speakers that I have um, like I said those will not show up on the L5210 um, just because they don't work with the system. But the quick set lock, the plug-in module, the battery, the Z-Wave thermostat, and the Quosa siren should. Now the first thing, this actually brings us to the first step. If you guys are looking at integrating Z-Wave devices between both hubs, 
you need to make sure the Z-Wave devices are first learned into the SmartThings hub. After you've learned in all your Z-Wave devices to SmartThings hub, you then have to learn in your L5210 as a secondary controller to the SmartThings hub. Once that's learned in, the Z-Wave devices from the SmartThings hub will get pushed over to the L5210 and then you'll have control from both hubs. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and I have my screen ready to go. So before I hit add a thing, I'm going to make sure my, L, my L5210 is on the correct screen. So you should be on the main screen on your L5210. It'll say security automation video. I'm going to hit automation. I'm going to hit the down arrow key and I'm going to go to tools. From tools, I'm going to go to advanced tools and then you need to enter in your master code. My default master code is one, two, three, four but you or your company may have changed it. So you want to make sure you're using the correct master code that you either change it to or that your company may have changed for you. So after you're in the master menu in the Z-Wave advanced tools, you're going to go ahead and you now have the learn button. So before I hit learn, I'm going to hit add a thing on my smart things app. It's now looking for devices. And now I'm going to hit learn on the L5210. Now, this process may take a little bit, so you do have to be patient. Um, the L5210, once it's been recognized by the panel, it'll say device found, please wait. Now we have to wait for the SmartThings hub to pull in all the information, which as you see, it just pulled it in right now. It was a couple of seconds delayed. And I'm just going to rename the device just so I'm not confused. I'll name it L5210. Done. And I'm going to hit save in the top right. It's going to ask me if I want to confirm or if I want to keep adding more devices. I'm just going to say I'm done adding devices. So just hit OK. And now my L5210 will show up on my SmartThings app as you see there. But as you notice, if you look at the L5210, it still says device found, please wait. What it's doing right now is it's trying to gather all the Z-Wave information and devices that are on the SmartThings hub. Um, and this may be up for about five to 10 minutes. Um, so you do have to be patient with it. Give it a little bit of time, something that you can do in the meantime, if you don't want to wait on this screen and you need to go in and do some other programming, you can actually just hit the house button and it'll take you out to the main screen. However, if I go back into automation, I'll actually get a warning saying that some locks are still not ready. Um, it says just the locks, but actually it's actually referring to basically every Z-Wave device. If I go to my thermostat, you'll see it has question marks. It hasn't pulled in any information. If I go to my lock, it'll actually say still not ready, lock 240. If I go to my switches, it'll those are actually learned in pretty quickly. But my thermostat and Z-Wave lock still have not. So I'm just going to go back to the main screen on here. Um, so like I said, that's going to take about 5 to 10 minutes to pull in the information. After it has pulled in all the information and synced up, now you can actually create scenes and rules with those Z-Wave devices that are shared between the devices or the hubs um, from the L52 panel. Or if you have Total Connect and you have the home automation feature enabled on your app, you can also start creating scenes and rules through the Total Connect application as well. Um, this is very beneficial. For instance, I may want uh, my Z-Wave devices, such as my locks and my lights. I, I may want any time I arm the system to away for all my door locks to lock and my porch lights to come on and my stair lights to come on. Um, again, these are just examples of scenes that you can create. Um, obviously, everyone's going to be having their own setup and their own uh, configuration. So it's just a uh, just letting you guys know just a quick brief example of something you guys can do. And you also be able to still continue to keep your Z-Wave um, your Z-Wave control from the SmartThings app as well. Now, as you can see here, if I go back into automation, let's see if everything's ready. Still not showing ready, but uh, my Z-Wave locks will show up on here. Um, and I'll actually be able to control them from both the alarm panel and the SmartThings app. So right now, I'm just going to show you guys real quick this, the, uh, the door lock. I'm going to show that I can actually control it through the SmartThings hub. All right, so right here I have my my quick set smart code 916 uh, electronic Z-Wave deadbolt lock. Um, and as you see on my uh, SmartThings hub on the top right, I actually says quick set 916 lock unlocked. Why? Because the deadbolt is actually 
in the lock right now simulating an open or unlocked door. If I want to lock it, I'm just going to click on the uh, unlocked button right there next to the lock. It'll take a second for the command to go through. And now you see that the deadbolt lock is showing, um, came out. So it's simulating a locked door. And then you also see the status on the Z-Wave hub is also showing locked. And again, I can go ahead and unlock it using the same button and you should see the deadbolt retract. Like I said, sometimes it does take a few seconds for Z-Wave commands to go through. Um, remember, it is a mesh network, so sometimes if Z-Wave locks are further out, it does have to hop from Z-Wave repeater to repeater. And uh, Z-Wave repeaters are usually considered uh, plug-in devices that aren't just battery operated, that actually get power from your house's AC outlets. So as you can see, the command still its taking a little while to go through. Um, I think it's because it finally finished pairing on the L5210. Let me check real quick. Automation. Locks. Okay. Let me go ahead and refresh it. So I just pulled down on the SmartThings hub to refresh the screen, and it looks like the command never went through. As you can see, the quick set 916 lock still shows locked. So I'm gonna go ahead and try entering the command one more time. And there we go. So sometimes the commands do get lost. If you just refresh the SmartThings hub by pulling down on the screen, it'll show you the status of the Z-Wave locks in case any commands didn't go through. Um, so make sure your guys are always doing that, especially if you're doing anything remotely. So now we're going to go ahead and go uh, back to the L5210. Um, let's see if the, the Z-Wave devices are ready yet. As you see, we're not getting the error message anymore. And if we go to our locks, um, I can actually control the lock as well. I can go ahead and click on the door lock, press the lock, and uh, it should probably take just the same amount of time. If you didn't hear, my Z-Wave lock did go into a lock mode. And um, again... Z-Wave, sometimes it takes a little bit for the actual status of the Z-Wave devices to go through on the hubs, as you saw with the smart things, and as you saw with the L5210, um, but something to just kind of uh, reset it, kind of like the same thing I refreshed with the down arrow pushing down on the app. You can also um, just back out of the screen and it should show you the updated status on that Z-Wave lock. Now, one important feature that I did want to touch base on, remember, uh, the, Z the SmartThings hub is a Z-Wave Plus hub. Um, and if you're using any Z-Wave Plus devices and you're using it with this normal Z-Wave L5210, you're going to be losing the features of the Z-Wave Plus devices. Usually the Z-Wave Plus features are um, longer battery life and longer range. So if you guys do learn in a Z-Wave Plus device, and you guys learn it in with a normal Z-Wave controller, more often than not, you usually lose the Z-Wave Plus feature. So it's just something to keep in mind. There is no Z-Wave Plus feature for the L5210 or any of the Honeywell panels at the moment. So the L5210, the L7000, or the Lyric, um, it's all just normal Z-Wave. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're getting or buying Z-Wave devices. Um, this was just a quick video on how you can integrate the SmartThings hub with your L5210 and the Z-Wave module uh, for the system. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to email us to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit the little bell icon to enable notifications so when we upload new content, you guys get notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.